Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review, and it's actually a review of a very expensive Louis Vuitton fragrance. And I've I have not reviewed very many Louis Vuitton fragrances on the channel, I must admit. I think I've only done one or two reviews of a Louis Vuitton. Um, but today we're going to talk about, I think, one of the better Louis Vuitton fragrances that I've smelled. And again, I must admit, I am not a Louis Vuitton expert by any stretch of the imagination. They're kind of seen as the um, evil empire, if you will, because they just own so much of everything. You know, the guy that owns LVMH is one of the richest men in the world. And the way that he's done it is by charging a lot of money for his products, right? And this is no exception. I believe when this first came out in 2020, the fragrance, by the way, before I start rambling, is called Nuit de Fa. And you may notice I have two decants here because when you have a big collection, you don't always need full bottles. 100 mil bottles are sometimes serious overkill. Um, even sometimes 50 mil bottles, I feel, are overkill when you have a really big collection. So what I did is I got two 10 mil decants off of a friend. Um, and that's a much more cost-effective way to buy a fragrance like this that's so expensive. I believe when it first came out, don't quote me on this, but it came out in 2020. And I think it was originally retailed for 365 US dollars for 100 mil. Now, on the Louis Vuitton website, it's $410. So prices just continue to keep going up for everything. Um, and, and so we'll talk a little bit about this. But first, I have to say, uh, and I'm not one for very much self-congratulation or patting myself on the back, but this, I just happened to, to notice this a couple episodes ago. I usually don't even check, but this is actually the um, 750th episode that I've put up on the channel in about two years, right? So I founded my channel uh, in December of 2021, um, and now here we are, end of November 2023. I hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving, by the way. Uh, and so I just want to mention that for the 750th episode, I plan on doing something uh, special. I plan on doing like a, maybe a live stream or something like that, where we can just sort of kick back and chat. It's been a while since I've done one of those. But um, so this, this today's official 750th episode will be a review of Nuit de Fa, but I do plan on doing some sort of a celebratory episode at some point in the future, whenever that may be. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this fragrance created by Jacques Cavalier. Um, and let me read you the little blurb according to the Louis Vuitton website, and then we'll talk a little bit about my two cents. Now, again, this is a fragrance that I don't have a full bottle of, so... Uh, whenever you're kind of dealing with an independent channel, sometimes you're just not always going to get to see a full bottle. But I have given this enough wearings while I feel comfortable talking about it. This is actually the fourth time I've worn this as my scent of the day today. Uh, and, and you can see that I've put a pretty good dent inside of this little decant. This comes from a reputable seller, a friend on eBay. Um, I've talked about him on the channel before. Um, but basically, I've used him before. I trust him. There's no doubt in my mind that this is legit juice, okay? So, but that being said, sometimes when, when, you know, you're sort of buying everything yourself and brands aren't sending you stuff, you just have to work off a of decant. That's just how it works. So if you want to see what the bottle looks like, you can go to the Louis Vuitton website. But here's how Louis Vuitton states the fragrance. It says, in the dark of night, scents of incense rise from the shadowy hollows in the dunes. Plunged into the icy night, the desert seems frozen under an endlessly star-studded sky. In the heart of this darkness, a campfire is crackling. Its dancing flames warm the travelers. Its smoke curling upwards into the sky. This moment, this, the scent of eternity, has inspired the master perfumer Jacques Cavalier to create a vibrant tribute to incense. A sacred scent revered down the ages and across cultures. It is the signature ingredient in Nuit de Fa, with three excuse me, exceptional essences in its trail. Softened by an exclusive infusion of natural leather and glorified by a powerful musk accord, the incense molds the, my the mystical scrolls of oud wood into a perfume that resonates with the history of the world. Okay, so there you go. Louis Vuitton does do some sort of refill deal. I guess if you use all your fragrance, you can refill it for a lower amount, but uh, I, that stuff never appealed to me. I don't really care about that at all. Um, and... I think it's still relatively expensive. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's over 200 bucks if you want to refill it, maybe 250 or something. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, and, and so the keynotes, according to Louis Vuitton, are white incense, black incense, infusion of natural leather, and oud wood. That's all they basically say. Um, so, so here's what's interesting about this fragrance. When you first spray, which I just did before I clicked start on the video five minutes ago, and you can see there's a pretty good sheen on my hand. So when you first spray the fragrance, okay, the first 
five to ten minutes or so are probably one of the more interesting parts of the fragrance because it opens up with this very charred quality, okay? So there's a charred sort of um, black, uh, very interesting opening is because I'm literally reminded of searing frankincense. Like imagine, you know how you sear a steak on a very hot um, pan or cast iron skillet or grill, right? Imagine searing a piece of incense, right? And that sort of lemony, piney quality that you get from fresh frankincense is sort of just covered up in ash, right? So I'm just reminded of just literally taking a piece of incense and sticking it on the grill and, and searing it using like charcoal, right? It gives off this black smokiness. And with that black smokiness, you're hit with a lot of spices, even though they're not listed. We'll maybe talk about those later on. And just imagine this frankincense, spicy, Middle Eastern style fragrance, just literally smoking. You close the lid on the grill and this black smoke is emanating. As Louis Vuitton very aptly says, curling to the sky, right? That's sort of the image in my mind as I first spray the fragrance on for the first five to ten minutes or so. And along with that opening comes this oud wood note, which to my nose personally, okay, so to my nose this is not an animalic oud. I do not think that this is like a blue cheese, fertilizer chips, you know, barnyard, poopy oud, whatever you want to call it, fecal, I don't think it's any of those things. In fact, I will say this, that to my nose, this is an oud accord. Now, I know Louis Vuitton, I heard some people, like I heard Sebastian when he talked about Ombre Nomad. I don't know if it's true for all of their fragrances or what, but I did hear some people say that Louis Vuitton claims to use real oud. I'm not going to get into that debate with this perfume, um, but what I will say is that to my nose and my way of smelling these type of perfumes, this smells like an oud accord to me. There may be real oud in here. I'm not saying there is not real oud in Nuit de Fa or in Ombre Nomad which I'll review Ombre Nomad very soon. But to my way of thinking, this reminds me of an Oud Accord, a Western Oud Accord, if you will. Think of the Oud that Guerlain used in its last Oud series, the one I hated, Oud Cole and stuff like that. Especially in the beginning, I get this very, um, you know, Westernized Oud Accord that when I smell it, doesn't smell convincing, okay? Does not smell convincing, and in fact, it smells much lower on the quality than the price you're paying for the perfume, if that makes sense. I really feel like the Oud Accord that they're using smells very designer and, in my honest opinion, lower class than the $410 Louis Vuitton is demanding for 100 mils of this fragrance. I would expect an LV perfume to just have a better Oud Accord in there, if, if, if I'm being honest. However, that being said, the good news is that I like this fragrance because the Oud Accord is not a main part of the fragrance breakdown to me. I think it's there. You know, you do get a little bit of a slight animalic touch, but it's almost like one of those things where if you're not really paying attention, it flies right by because this fragrance is all about the different types of incense used. They say um, Somalian frankincense, incense, and then what is called a black incense accord, apparently. And so the fragrance really focuses on this smoky incense accord. And as it dries down, it really turns into a proper incense. So for example, you know, if you're familiar with real, just straight up and down incense fragrances like Incense Avignon, if you like wearing stuff like this, which I'll review this on the channel as well, I think this is one of the best just pure incense fragrances money can buy. If you like this, you will kind of like what this turns into. But what happens is they wrap the opening in something that is a little more exotic smelling, okay? Because you get that charred aspect to the frankincense. They say black frankincense in the note listing on Parfumo, but there definitely is this ashy, burnt wood quality to the smokiness with, along with that little oud note, which tends to kind of come in and leave the fragrance. And it feels like maybe it comes back later on um, but the Oud note is not impressive to me at all. In fact, it's probably one of the least impressive parts of Nuit de Fa to me. I feel like it could be done much better, um, and I feel like uh, Jacques Cavalier has sort of made this accord where I feel like I've smelled it a couple times, and he's just using it um, in, the Nuit, in the Louis Vuitton Middle Eastern lines, if that makes sense. So for me, um, that's probably the most disappointing side of it, the, the Oud Accord. That being said, like I said, this is one of my favorite Louis Vuitton Oud perfumes that I've smelled. And, um, you know, I actually like this fragrance. I am a fan of this fragrance, okay? So I don't want you to think I'm disparaging the fragrance in any uh, aspect, but I want to give you my honest 
one how I really feel as the fragrance progresses. Um, and for me, I really feel like that opening oud note just smells a little cheap, especially if you've smelled real ouds, if you've kind of smelled what Russian Adam and Ensar and Bortnikov create. And I understand you cannot compare the two. The problem is once you sort of smell that side of things, it's very hard to then go back and not compare something like this, which is claiming they're using a Sam oud or whatever they're oozing, using, right? Um, it's hard not to go back and then compare, especially for this price point, because at this price point, that's where you can then say, you know what, I'll just take my money and why would I give it to the LVMH, what some people call the evil empire, right, that owns everything. I'm going to go to the smaller places, which use bigger percentages of oods or whatever it may be, right? So that's always the debate with these type of fragrances. But again, that being said, I like this fragrance. I've enjoyed wearing it today as my scent of the day. And I want to highlight something on price that happened uh, today. I was watching a live stream from Persolase, which I hardly ever do, but it was an Amouage live stream with the new fish man, Reynold Salman. And, and he was mentioning these increases in, in the brands and in the um, pricing of perfume as time has gone on. And Persolase actually said something that I think makes a lot of sense for me. Um, they were talking about Amouage reissuing re crystal and gold collection. Um, and I'm not sure the price, but I think it's going to be pretty damn expensive. And I think they're only making 500 of each, if you will. Um, there are some comments on there where people say, hey, this feels like a money grab, blah, 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 right? Um, and I'm not sure what the price will be, but I, I hear it's very, very expensive. Um, and so one thing that Persolase said that really caught my attention, and I think makes a lot of sense, is he said these brands, they really can't fall behind on pricing because if let's say brand A puts their pricing here and brand B is here, the consumer will think, well, then brand A is actually a quote unquote better fragrance. So brand B puts their prices here. And then there's this constant sort of, we want to be seen as exclusive. We want to be seen as luxury. But I think it's gotten so out of control that many of the people in the perfume market are turning away or looking for alternatives, right? They're going, I'm not going to give Louis Vuitton $410 for 100 mils of this, right? And that's where you start sort of having these type of conversations. So I just wanted to bring that up because I think the public in general is kind of getting to that point where they're just like, you know what, we're seeing all of this happen, but now we're just going to take our foot off of the gas pedal and watch. You know, we're not just going to keep throwing money dollar after dollar. And on top of that, the releases are going faster and faster and faster, right? So it's not like the old days where they would just release a fragrance every year or two or in you know Chanel did uh very famously went like 20 plus years between to their masculine releases from um Chanel Pour Monsieur to Antaeus right and so now it seems like they're releasing just constantly creating over and over and over again so um just something I thought I would mention because the price is very expensive here and it makes a lot of sense when you think about that so you really have to be sort of very shrewd and you have to sample a lot you um you don't just want to watch a review and go give Louis Vuitton $410 for a fragrance like this. You really want to get into the details. So let's get into the details of the fragrance. So for me, that first five to 10 minutes, that is where that charred sort of, um, where the brand call or the Parfumo calls it black frankincense, right? As that five to 10 minutes starts to dissipate and you're in your, uh, it's happening right now, right? We're 13 minutes in and I'm starting to get less and less of that charred, blackened like effect like uh it reminds me for some reason of like blackened tilapia right or blackened fish or something right imagine this sort of blackened frankincense aspect being sort of solely pushed to the side very elegantly i might add i think jacques cavalier is a fantastic perfumer and what as it disappears what sort of comes into its place to fill the void if you will is this lemony um sort of uh piney and many of the things that you think about when you smell a frankincense that is fresh, right? So when the tree is injured and those frankincense tears form and they pluck and they harvest them off of the tree, when you smell that without it actually being smoked, it smells very fresh and very lemony and very piney and slightly smoky, right? You know, there are um, cypress aspects to it. There are green aspects, some say medicinal aspects to it, right? But that blackened, ashy frankincense starts to disappear. And in its place comes the fresher, lemony take on the incense, right? So the, the incense note um, sort of remains the star of the show all throughout the different phases. And that's what makes this one an incense lovers, I would say, 
if you're an incense lover, you, you'll probably really like this fragrance. Um, because it stays true to that, but it does it in a way that is, I think, appealing to the mass market. It's doing it in the Middle Eastern style. And um, I want to be clear, there's still this sort of um, smokiness that stays with the fragrance. So even though we've gone to the lemony, fresher aspects of the incense, right, there's still this sort of um, smokiness that remains. There's still this, as they said, curvy wisps of incense. And that is very true. Uh, and it stays, even as that black and charred aspect gets pushed to the background, right? It starts to smell more like you are burning wood, right? So it starts to go from the black and charred aspect of the frankincense more to like you're almost burning a piece of wood. And if you actually go to the Louis Vuitton website, if you will, and just scroll through some of the pictures, what you'll see is you'll see, first of all, the bottle. They love showing off their bottle and their bottles are pretty, I will admit. Um, this has sort of a greenish blue turquoise tint, if you will, to the bottle. I don't own any Louis Vuittons uh, fragrances myself. And then it sort of turns into this, if you, the next picture, if you will, looks like what they're trying to show is a piece of wood with the black infection on it. And, and, and then maybe a couple pieces of another type of wood that are um, more, maybe sandalwood or cedarwood looking, right? They don't have the infected oud would look and they're both sort of giving off this smoke right and those two are sort of combined together with this beautiful sort of um background this this uh almost like you're looking at clouds that are um highlighted by the sun right so the rays of the sun are reflecting off of the cloud and giving this beautiful pink sort of uh tone in the background with the blue sky and the darker sky in the background, right? That's sort of the picture that they show. And that's actually a really good picture of what the fragrance turns into after its transition. Because uh, I've heard some people mention that they think this is a very linear fragrance. And I would agree with them if you get past that first transition. So the first 10 to 15 minutes or so, five to 15 minutes, depending on your skin, it seems like sometimes it goes a little faster or sometimes it lasts a little bit longer. But that first transition, which has basically happened now, we're 17 minutes in, and that very first transition has basically happened. And so it starts smelling more like you're smelling burning wood and cleaner frankincense. So yesterday, I'll tell you a story. Yesterday, I went to the Dallas Art Museum, which I haven't done for a long time, but I love that place. I remember going there as a kid, and I, I love art in general. I could just sit there and stare at art and just think about things, and I think it's a, it's a great way to sort of stimulate the mind, right? Get out of your comfort zone see different things, learn about different artists, stuff like that. And so one of the exhibits that they had yesterday, uh, and I think this is like one of the common, I don't think it was a special exhibit, just one of the normal exhibits that the Dallas Art Museum has is on Islamic art, okay? And so some of the things that they had, um, you know, reminded me of my childhood because, um, you know, because of the fact that um, I remember growing up in a Middle Eastern household, if you will. My father is from Jordan. I was born in Jordan. And I remember being in family gatherings and stuff like that. And they would have these serving trays, right? And the serving trays looked like they were maybe made out of bronze or, you know, something like that, right? Well, in this history, this center for Islamic art, if you will, um, they had this one tray that almost looked like it was like blackened from being dirty and stuff like that. And they had another tray, which almost looked like someone just cleaned it to a T, like it was just created, like no one ever used it, right? And you could really see sort of that bronze metal shining through, right? And so this frankincense here, what it turns into feels like it's, it starts out as the first tray where it's just dirty. Maybe it was buried underground for decades, hundreds of years, who knows how long, right? The bronze is all dirty and disgusting and blackened and stuff like that. And the frankincense then turns into something that sort of gives off that covered in dirt, covered in ash sort of side of it. And it just becomes this very smooth, very smooth, very polished, like they polished that bronze tray, right? Very polished. And now once they polished it, you can see sort of the... Um, insignia on it. You can see it's not just a bronze tray. It's a it's a bronze tray that someone took time to engrave beautifully with whatever engraving you can imagine on there that they would put on in Arabic style art, right? Polished beauty. That's what the frankincense turns into, I would say, with this perfume to me. Um, 
And along with that sort of fresher, more polished incense is what Louis Vuitton calls a natural infusion of leather, okay? Now, this leather is very soft, very supple, not my type of leather. Like if you're thinking of the leather fragrances that I love, right? The 80s leathers, the Bellamy's and stuff like that. This is not that at all. This is just this very supple, soft, um, maybe you could almost consider it like calf leather. Um, you know, this um, leather where you almost have to focus to smell it, right? It is, um, it's kind of one of those things where you, um, you, when you focus, you will smell it. But if you just kind of let your brain go, the leather just hangs out in the background. It never threatens the incense to take the lead role. The leather allows the incense to stay right up front in its different iterations, right? But that being said, um, the first switchover of this fragrance, the first transition, we'll call it, which happens, like I said, 5 to 15 minutes in, depending on your skin, um, that is really the main transition of the fragrance. Once that transition happens, it's linear, and it stays in this sort of fresher frankincense feel to my nose, okay? So, um, so... The leather is very soft and supple, and the time that the leather actually enters the fragrance, the, the time that the leather really joins the party, to me, to my nose, is right around the time that the fragrance shifts from that first iteration to the second iteration of the fragrance, okay? So, um, as if you like what the fragrance turns into after the first 15 minutes or so, you'll like it for the rest of the fragrance, because it really stays like that, to my nose, for the whole six to eight hours, or however long it's going to be, right? It pretty much um, sits there for the rest of the life of the perfume, okay? It's a static fragrance after that. So, I don't want to say that there's no transitions, but the main transition happens really early. But, if you're someone who sprays judges and moves on, you will miss it. Even though the transition happens very quickly, this is something I would urge you to probably try to spend some time with, okay? It's kind of one of those things that you want to try and at least um, sit with for a little bit. See how the fragrance develops, right? Don't spray, and you should never spray and judge anyways. This one, the transition happens very early, but, but there is a transition that takes place. And there's a couple features of this fiery night, if you will, this Louis Vuitton Nuit de Fa, this fiery night fragrance that um, I should mention. So one of them is this campfire idea, right? So if you go back to the Louis Vuitton sort of write-up, so what they say is that um, the detail according to Louis Vuitton is in the dark of night, right? Scents of incense rise from the shadowy hollows, plunged into the icy dark night. The desert seems frozen under an endlessly star-studded sky. And just imagine dancing flames warming the traveler, right? The fire, the dancing flames of the fire, right? So this fiery night campfire theme I think is pretty interesting because one thing with the crackling campfire that always comes to mind for me is spices, right? And I think that one thing that is in this fragrance, and if you really pay attention, you'll be able to sort of pick them out, is I think there is a pretty respectable blend of Middle Eastern style spices done. So, you know, uh, I've used this crackling campfire imagery previously before in, in the desert, if you will. If you watch my Epic Man um, review, right? That is a fragrance that I think uses some of the spices, at least in the opening, kind of similar to what Jacques Cavalier was trying to create with Nuit de Fa. And I think there are things like pink pepper and black pepper in here. I think there's probably some nutmeg, maybe even a tiny hint of cardamom. And all of these are small enough where they don't even mention it, right? But I think there's like, um, to create this crackling campfire-like effect, if you will, with the incense, I think they sort of... Um, use some of these spices, some of these Middle Eastern spices in very small doses, maybe even a tiny touch of things like cumin or mace or stuff like that, right? In the smallest amounts, just to make you feel this Middle Eastern campfire. Um, and then as the campfire rises, it gets well away from those spices and turn, keeps to that wispy, curvy incense, if you will, right? Into the air. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, Jacques Cavalier uh, use some of those spices. I also wouldn't be surprised if maybe there was a little bit of saffron in here. Saffron is another note that's not officially listed in that note breakdown, but, you know, saffron adds this Middle Eastern style. I'm always reminded of desert dunes whenever I smell saffron. If you actually look at the pictures 
Um, one of the pictures, there's only four pictures or so. One of them literally is the Nuit de Fa fragrance sitting on a um, rolling sand dune, if you will, right? Um, and so I think saffron helps to create that Middle Eastern atmosphere. So, so for me, saffron definitely feels like there's a little bit of saffron in here, even though they don't bother to list it as a note. Um, and the final note pairing that sort of comes together as the fragrance dries down. So it's not just like a fade to black. It doesn't, um, kind of, um, uh, completely just disappear off of your skin. What it, what this fragrance does as it continues to dry is it brings in a couple notes, which again, I think there is an accord which Jacques Cavalier used while working on other Louis Vuitton or other, I would say, fragrances owned by Louis Vuitton that were trying to maybe play in similar uh, styles and ideas, if you will, right? And um, those two notes for this fragrance are called Ambrette Seed and Musk. Those, those two fragrance notes kind of team up as they continue to dry down. And Ambrette is a plant-based uh, it's actually a very expensive plant-based ingredient that comes from the hibiscus flower. It can be known as hibiscus seeds, I believe, as well. And it sort of adds this leathery, uh, musky, powdery, almost fruity, irisy smell, right? So imagine this sort of posh. It, it's a very posh and high-class note to me. And he's mixed that ambrette with musk. And I think the ambrette is also what gives it a little bit of this leathery facet. And I think the reason it's such a supple, soft leather, right? That joins the party when the fragrance goes through that first transition. And I love ambrette. I am a huge ambrette fan. It's one of my all-time favorites. And it's mixed with musk. And, um, you know, that sort of ambrette musk combination feels like if you've smelled some of the other musk fragrances he's created, like one of the ones that's on the docket for me to really talk about one day is a fragrance called Falcar. And Falcar was created by, again, Jacques Cavalier for the House of Bulgari in this Le Gem collection, which is like their high-end collection or whatever it is. Um, and Falcar has a very interesting sort of oud, leather, um, you know, musk profile, if you will. And the musk profile in here reminds me a lot of the musk profile in what you get in something like Nuit de Fa. So, um, you know, this is another ex probably overpriced uh, fragrance from one of the Louis Vuitton fragrance houses that they own. One of the many Louis Vuitton houses they own, hence the whole evil, evil empire moniker. Um, but with that being said, I think the musk sort of um, just adds a little bit of fuzziness, the ambrette maybe adds a little bit of creaminess, maybe you could even stretch it and say just a touch of booziness, just a touch, um, but really the star of the show is the incense, the, you know, what starts out as that black incense, what moves into the Somalian frankincense slash incense, whatever you want to call it, and it does turn lemony and piney and fresher as time goes on, so it kind of you know, works in reverse. Whereas with a normal incense, it starts out lemony and piney, and then you burn it and it turns smokier and ashier. This one sort of goes the opposite way. Um, but as far as the picture, the creation, the sort of way Jacques Cavalier blended everything together, do I like it? Yes. Do I think it's overpriced? Oh, hell yes. Um, I think this is extremely overpriced. Um, would I wear it? Yes, I enjoy wearing it. Um, but I would I buy a bottle? No, absolutely not. I mean, this these two 10 mils are more than enough for me right now. Um, you can see I've had this for, uh, I don't know, probably over a year. And between the two, I mean, that's how much I've used wearing it four times. So that's why I say you don't always need a full bottle. That being said, um, I think this is one of the better Louis Vuittons. I think that uh, Louis Vuitton sort of doing this Middle Eastern style fragrances, Jacques Cavalier does a good job of it. Um, I'll review Falcar. I'll review Ombre Nomad. It's on the list to one of these days. I'll get around to reviewing Ombre Nomad, but um, I'm a fan. I like incense. Incense is one of my favorite notes. Um, and so, you know, for, um, you know, for me, if you're an incense fan, this is one I can definitely recommend smelling. Just maybe try to find a decan or something so you don't have to spend as much money. I know price is subjective and all that stuff, but I really do feel like Persolase is onto something with his whole brands raising their prices and competing against each other to be seen as sort of that elite brand. 
Um, and it, I think it's just getting out of control. I think as consumers, eventually we're just gonna have to say, nope, enough is enough. We're not paying those type of prices. People are obviously paying it or they wouldn't be pricing them there. Um, but you know, for me, it's a, it's a, when you start to smell some of the other fragrances created in smaller batches, right? That use some of these notes in middle Eastern style perfumery. It's very hard to give a house like LVMH $410, you know, what they're asking. It's just, it's very tough. Once you sniff some of the creations from some of these artisanal brands, um, it's just, it's, it, it's so hard to then go back and go back to this type of perfumery for me personally. But um, I do think it's a good fragrance. I think Jacques Cavalier did a good job with this one. So bravo for his creation on this. One of the better Louis Vuittons, in my opinion. Nuit de Fa. Uh, if you're an incense fan, definitely one I can recommend checking out. If you have experience with, with Nuit de Fa, I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, let me know what you think on what's going on with price and, and what you think about the brand of Louis Vuitton. I would love to dive more into their offerings. They're just so uh, unbelievably exp expensive. I'm just sort of, you know, reliant on small things like samples and stuff like that. But anyways, appreciate um, you watching the 750th episode of me just getting on here and rambling about perfume. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thanks to everyone who supports me and all that good stuff. I uh, love having you guys around, love the interactions, love the back and forth, and there will be a live stream to celebrate the 750th uh, episode one of these days. So cheers, guys. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.